Welcome to part two of a five-part series of videos entitled A Guide to Switching to Linux, Pop! OS Edition. And in this video, I'm going to be going over navigating the Pop! OS desktop. Now, in my previous video, I gave a brief introduction to Pop! OS, as well as showed how to install it on a dual boot with Windows. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can go check it out here. But in this video, I'm going to be kind of showing you around the Pop! OS desktop and explain some of the differences between Windows and Linux, and specifically Windows and Pop! OS. Because after all, although Pop! OS is a very beginner-friendly distribution, it's still going to take some getting used to if all you've ever known is Windows or Mac. Now, I'm not going to go in depth with this video because I don't really want to make it crazy long. But anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so right now I'm at the Pop! OS login screen. First, let's take a look at the top bar. We got our date and time here and our calendar. We've got some settings here for our login screen. And up here, this is where our other options are. Right now we've just got volume, network, and power off or suspend, which is what Linux calls sleep mode. But anyway, I'm going to log in real quick by selecting my account, my password. And now that we're at the desktop, we've got our dock here, which is like the taskbar on Windows. And we've got even more options on our top bar. Obviously, we still got our calendar here, but under that menu, you've even got notifications and our events. And there's even a toggle for do not disturb. And up here, you've actually got options for settings and lock. But if we go up to workspaces, this is what Pop! OS calls virtual desktops. And it's pretty much similar to what you're used to on Windows, except that you're always going to have at least two. So the idea is that you always have one empty one, and then when you need to use that, you just switch to it and it'll create another blank virtual desktop if you need another one. And when you stop using virtual desktop, once it's blank, it'll get rid of that automatically. This is what's known as dynamic virtual desktops. And by the way, you can also get to your workspaces menu from here, from this button on your dock. And if we click on applications, we get our applications menu. Similar to the start menu on Windows, we can actually rename folders by clicking this little edit icon. And we can even delete folders by clicking that trash icon. We can even create our own folders, like so. Just type in the name, and then hit create. But let's say we wanted to add an application to it, say our Firefox web browser and our email, because let's just say that those are the only applications that we ever use. We can just drag it into the folder, and there you go. Same with our mail application. So now I'm going to actually delete this folder, which will move the applications into library home. There you go. So now let's take a quick look at our settings. Again, I'm not going to go too in-depth, so that way I don't make this video crazy long. And by the way, if you ever want to maximize an application to fill up the screen, all you do is just drag the window to the very top of the screen, like this, until you see an outline of the window's new dimensions, and then release your mouse. But I mean, we've got our network settings here, and if you have Wi-Fi, you also see your Wi-Fi settings up here. But I mean, here under the desktop menu is where we get access to our desktop personalization options, and we can even choose our wallpaper from here. I actually kind of like this wallpaper, so I'll use that. Just click on it, and it applies. And we can even change our appearance from here. There's actually quite a few settings in here. You can look through this menu. But anyway, we're gonna close out of settings, and I'm gonna take a look at files which is our file manager on Pop! OS. You can see you got desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, and videos, kind of like what you may be used to on Windows. You can right-click to rename or delete files, which Linux will call move to trash. And then once you move something to trash, which is what Linux calls the recycle bin, you can obviously restore or permanently delete files. And there's obviously a function to empty the trash, to permanently delete all the files in it. If you ever wanted to create a new document, you go into the application used to make that particular document. Say you wanted to make a Word document, you go into LibreOffice Writer, which is the default word processing application on Pop! OS. And by the way, LibreOffice is a free and open source alternative to Microsoft Office. It's not quite like Microsoft Office, but it's pretty similar. It would suit, I would say, the vast majority of users' needs. And if you really want your Microsoft Office, there's also the online Microsoft Office. But anyway, pro tip, if you don't like this showing up every time you open up LibreOffice, just uncheck show tips on startup, then close it. 
There you go, now you'll never see it again. And by the way, this will only show on first launch. We can close that, but then we can just type our document, say this is a document, and then we can go up here to save, and then let's name our document. I'm just gonna call it document. Pop OS will actually put a file name and cancel and save options on the top rather than on the bottom, unlike what you may be used to on Windows. But anyway, I'm gonna save this document, and now we can close out of LibreOffice, and if we go into our documents, there it is. So, similar to what you may be used to on Windows, Microsoft Office, I would say most users would probably find their way around it sooner rather than later. But right now I actually want to get into the web browser, which is one of, if not the most used application. And the default web browser on Pop! OS is called Firefox. Now, you can also install Google Chrome on this, which I'll go over in part three of this series. But anyway, we've got our address bar up here, so we can go to youtube.com, which is right here, or we can even type in the URL. And by the way, this is also where you type in searches. And there you go, there's my channel homepage. I'm not gonna really try playing a video right now because since I'm using a virtual machine, the playback quality is gonna be just garbage. So I'm gonna close out of that. And we also have it Geary, which is Pop! OS's default email client. We have options to connect it to Gmail, Outlook, Yahoo, a few of the common email providers. If you use another email provider, then you can Add that, just type in your name, email address, and your email information. And by the way, if you're not sure what IMAP and SMTP server are, no worries, just type in your email address and it should auto-complete these fields for you. But anyway, I'm not gonna set up my email right now, so I'm gonna close out of that. And the Pop Shop is the app store for Pop OS, and I'll go over that in part three of this series, but here under installed is where we can get our updates. And now let's take a look at our terminal, which is what Linux calls the command prompt. You may actually find yourself using this quite a bit, but fret not, you can just copy and paste. Just obviously be careful about where you're copying and pasting from if you don't know what you're copying and pasting. This is also another way to install software in addition to the pop shop, but as a new user, I'd suggest, in most cases, just use the Pop Shop to install software. Once you get more experienced with Linux, you might find yourself using Terminal to install your software, but that'll be later in your Linux journey. But anyway, I think we are done with this video, so let's shut down the system by going up here and clicking Power Off, then Power Off again, and call it a day. And that concludes my video on navigating the Pop! OS desktop. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. And in my next video, I'm going to be going over installing software on Pop! OS. So stay tuned for that.